of locking their adopted son in a small room for hours at a time. Tim Ferreter and his wife are accused of keeping their adopted son in a small structure in their garage for hours at a time, according to detectives. 48-year-old Tim Ferreter is charged with child neglect, aggravated child abuse, and false imprisonment. The judge acknowledged the disturbing nature of the charges, and in fact, several parents and caregivers in the jury pool said they did not feel they could be impartial. Media coverage of the case was also discussed. This case has been referred to in the media as the boy in the box case. Jupiter police arrested the couple back in February of 2022 on charges of aggravated child abuse and false imprisonment. Investigators say they allegedly kept their 14 year old adopted son in a eight by eight locked deadbolt box in their garage. The teen telling police he was allowed to go to school and he was locked in the box for up to 18 hours at a time with nothing but a mattress and a plastic bucket to use the bathroom. 48 year old Tim Ferreter is charged with child neglect, aggravated child abuse and false imprisonment. The judge acknowledged the disturbing nature of the charges and in fact, several parents and caregivers in the jury pool said they did not feel they could be impartial. The young boy telling police this isn't the first time they've done that. He says the other homes that the family has lived in also had structures in the garage where he was forced to stay. They were previously in Arizona and in Arizona, uh, there was a structure there, he told police. And uh, most recently, an owner that bought the home from the parents uh, says that they had um, a structure inside that garage with deadbolts. He found it very creepy, he said, and told police that that the realtor listed it as a bonus room, uh, but he did feel like it was very strange. So the boy says he was put in there for up to 18 hours at a time with only a mattress and a bucket to use for the bathroom. He says he was only allowed out for school and forced to do yard work and was physically abused one time for taking chocolate from the kitchen. Now, according to police, they confirmed the boy's claims through cameras that were placed inside of the structure. But during yesterday's first appearance, the attorney for the parents argued that the teen may be suffering from some mental health issues. However, nothing has been confirmed. We're told DCF is also investigating. All right, guys, we got a new case dive here. Apparently, this trial is going to be starting this week. Well, okay, let me, I'll take that back. The mother and the father's trial have been separated. The father's trial begins on Tuesday of this week. They face up to 30 years in prison. And the one thing that's stumping me here is that they both refused a plea deal, which would have gotten them like, I think, a, what did I say, 14 months in, pri in prison, then, you know, with probation or something. So it kind of makes me wonder if it's like, hmm, because this is going to be very controversial, okay? It's either going to be one way or the other. I, I almost feel like, these parents were doing what they probably maybe thought was the right thing. No, oh, don't get mad at me. Hang on. Let me finish. But you can't, you can't imprison someone. It's not legal to imprison someone. So maybe you have a child that has come from a bad background and it does have, the child does have problems. The big question and what we're going to find out in trial is what, measures what steps did they take to make sure that this child there were other things that they did before putting him in this little space that they've little they call it a box everybody calls it a box it was a little room that they created inside of their garage they built a, a, a room and i actually wanted you guys to hear uh the piece that came from the contractor and how he described, because he's the one that actually turned them in in Jupiter, Florida. So let me go to that part real quick. You can listen to that. He asked me to build a box, basically. And he asked me on top of that to build a ceiling for that box. He asked me to add a deadlock to the door. He asked me to reverse the locks. On my way home with my employee, something felt wrong to me, and the only reason I could come up with is that it's not an office, and this place is made to lock a person inside. 
Okay. So he's the one that just felt like something went right and he turned him in. And that's how they got caught in Jupiter. But gosh, this goes back, guys. They lived in Arizona before then. And they found out that the home in Arizona they lived in also had an enclosure. The new the person that purchased it said so they when they purchased it, it kind of felt weird and they ended up removing it. And all of the looks like all the media that was talking about it, some showed there was permitting for um demolishing the the I want to call them the rooms that were built in the garage. And then I think there was another house that showed that there could have been the homeowner had said that they did remove something, but they didn't pull a permit for it. So uh let me um, let me go through my notes really quick because I want to also address what they're talking about this child has, which is reactive. Attachment disorder, reactive attachment disorder. So since 2017, they're saying, the prosecution is saying that these this couple allegedly was physically abusing this child. Now, this is what the child has also told law enforcement. In January of 2022, she called 911 and reported that the son had run away. And I think that that's kind of where some of this... Uh, investigation started it started rolling out more but the contractor had maybe it was the contractor that had previously tipped off the police and from what i understand this room had not been built that long by the time that so you know between the time of that happening and then maybe the tipping off the, the piece sort of the police are piecing things together and and that's where they went with that uh the teen had said he was also locked up in Arizona. So we kind of talked about that. The name of the couple is Ferreter. And it's Timothy. I don't have her name yet because I haven't even looked at her trial part. Um, they were arrested in February of 2022. The room was approx approximately eight by eight. And it was in the single car garage. So I guess the garage that they had, the home that they had, was a very nice home in West Palm Beach. And it had two garages and one was a single car garage. And so they took this area and you saw the pictures that um, were shown. And I think Court TV has a really good uh, piece on this too, uh, where they're showing where they were actually building the unit, I think. Um, or maybe that was the part where they were tearing it down. It included, the the unit had a bed, it had a camera so they could watch him, a bucket, a TV, and a desk. The child had told them that he spent up to 18 hours at a time there, and the only time that he was let out was when he was had to go to school. They do have three other children in the home. And uh, they are questioning, the children have been questioned and apparently are going to be brought in by the prosecution. Uh, the adopted child that was is being called the boy in the box. He's, I think he was 13 when this happened. He's 14 now. So their charges are false imprisonment and aggravated child abuse. And let me go in really quick and show you guys, because I want to talk. Well, let's listen to what this other news report brought up as far as what they found. And then we'll go back. He's in Arizona reported the case to the Department of Child Safety. A 14 year old runaway saying his parents were spanking him with a leather belt and a jump rope similar allegations to the ones he made to Jupiter police. And we've gotten pictures of the actual box room in that Jupiter garage, thanks to the contractor who built it and who suspected something was wrong. These parents, whom we are not identifying, are facing charges in Palm Beach County for aggravated child abuse. Their runaway 14-year-old son in January told investigators his adoptive parents repeatedly locked him in an 8 by 8 box-like room in the garage for up to 18 hours at a time and physically abused him. 
The boys said the physical punishments also happened a lot when the family previously lived in Arizona and that he was confined to a similar box room there. We just obtained the Pima County Sheriff's Office reports documenting two investigations. Pima County deputies in November 2021 were responding to a runaway child report made by the parents. When they found the boy two days later, the report says he was shaking and very scared. The report says the boy told them he, out of all his siblings, was the only one that gets spanked and he gets spanked with a jump rope and a leather belt. It goes on to say his mother recently had restrained him up against the wall and began yelling at him. When deputies found the boy, they say he kept changing his story about where he'd been and who with. Deputies writing, at this time, we knew that he was lying. Deputies say the teen also had credit cards and other items that did not belong to him. A second report two weeks later says the boy ran away again, his mother saying she had been keeping a close eye on him, that he'd gotten in trouble at school for misusing his laptop and refused to take medication for an unspecified condition. That incident ended when the parents found the boy at a friend's house and they were currently dealing with parental discipline. I just emailed the parent's attorney, Nellie King. She says the Arizona Department of Child Safety concluded allegations of child abuse by the boy were unfounded. She says that finding is substantiated by sheriff's investigators who determined the boy's statements to them were untruthful. The parents claim the boy has a history of problems. They remain free on bond while DCF has taken temporary custody of their other three children. Okay, so let's see. I want to look up, so I, I pulled up reactive attachment disorder and I'm looking up on the National Library of Medicine it says that they classify the disorder as a trauma and stressor related condition of early childhood caused by social neglect and maltreatment which is common in children that have been misplaced early on in life right I mean children that come out of the foster system they're highly susceptible to this thing right Affected children have difficulty forming emotional attachments to, uh, attachments to others, show a decreased ability to experience positive emotion, cannot seek or accept physical or emotional closeness, and may react violently when held, cuddled, or comforted. Behaviorally affected children are unpredictable, difficult to console, and difficult to discipline. Moods fluctuate erratically, and children may seem to live in a fight, flight, or freeze mode. Most have a strong desire to control their environment and make their own decisions. This activity describes the evaluation, diagnosis, and management of reactive attachment disorder and stresses. Now, it says that it's kind of the same thing we just went over. It says the genesis of reactive attachment disorder is encompassed under the designation of traumatic experience specifically. The severe emotional neglect commonly found in institutional settings such as overcrowded or orphanages foster care, or in homes with mentally or physically ill parents. Over time, infants who do not develop a predictable, nurturing bond with a trusted caregiver do not receive adequate emotional interaction and mental stimulation halt their attempts to engage others and turn inward, ceasing to se seek comfort when hurt, avoiding physical and emotional closeness, and eventually becoming emotional bereft. The absence of adequate nurturing results in poor language acquis acquisition, acquisition, I have poor language acquisition at this point, impaired cognitive development and contributes to behavioral dysfunction. It's difficult to accurately assess. So I think I'm pretty certain this child's been diagnosed with this. They're, they didn't say they were unsure about the other, but I wonder if that's what the drugs that he was on was all about. Do you guys remember the little girl, the infamous little girl where they did the interview? Can't, oh, I can't think of her name, but she's been in the news in the last couple of years where she's, she seems to be living a normal life now. But when she was a child, she tried to hurt her adopted brother or she was adopted. She tried to hurt her brother that of the family that she was adopted into. And she would, they would, she was doing like, like crazy things with dolls and stuff like that. I know you guys know who I'm talking about. Um, I can't think of the name of it. But that's kind of what this reminds me of. 
But so, so the reason that I wanted to, to bring that up is because I don't want to ignore that part of the whole scenario. I do believe that sometimes people try to do the right thing in adopting a child and you don't know what the child's experience before you got the child. So if, if you've tried everything in the book and it's not working, what do you do? Now, I'm not saying this couple has done that, but I just, I'm really like, why didn't they take that plea deal? It really makes me believe that they have a lot in their arsenal of defense that's going to come back and show we did this, we did this, we did this, and we did this. Now, are they going to get something for in prison, in, uh, putting a child in prison technically? Yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't lock someone in a room that you're supposed to be caring for and loving. So, I mean, it's a catch 2020 there, but I think it's going to be a really interesting case. I think it's going to be very controversial and I, it, it starts on Tuesday and if it's streamed, I want to follow it. So I don't know if I'm going to put up, I, you guys might just see me go live on Tuesday morning with it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, set up and be ready to, um, I hate to set up a live stream and then not be able to stream it. So I, I, just, I might just wait till I know I can get it and then go live. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. So anyway, um, either way, if I don't do a live stream of the case or the trial, then I do plan on actually uh, just following it and keeping up with it. And then we'll talk about it in the future and whatnot. Cause then, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff on it. And again, you can go back and see what court TV has. They've, they've had a couple of different, um, talking points. I think there's like three or four different videos that they put up about the case itself. So I kind of feel like it's going to be live streamed and it's in Florida. So hello. Uh, it's always live stream in Florida. All right. Well, that's it. I just wanted to, uh, get this intro going so that in the future we can talk about it. If you guys have any questions or, uh, suggestions about this case, please drop them in the comment below. I really appreciate your input. Don't forget to like, and subscribe my video. And Hey, if you subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell. And when it drops down, pick all, because if you try to pick anything else, I, there's no guarantee it's going to notify you. I, under, I don't understand the notification bell. None of us do. It's a mystery where we've all, we've all been trying to figure out, but just click the all button and hopefully it'll tell you when I go live or when I drop another video. Y'all have a blessed day. Stay safe and I'll talk to you soon. Did I just say, 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 stay, say, stay, say, stay, y'all say, stay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's late. Bye.